There are artists and entertainers who sadly leave us too soon, but in their short lifespans they leave behind an incredible body of work and their legacy lives on even decades after passing. The country singer Patsy Cline is a great example. The musician died on March 5, 1963 in a plane crash at age 30, yet today we still listen to her music and discuss her life. Of particular interest to Patsy Cline fans are the chilling words she spoke before her plane crashed. Join Facts First as we take a look at the incredible life and career of Patsy Cline. Early Life Patsy Cline was born Virginia Patterson Hensley on September 8, 1932, in Winchester, Virginia. Her childhood wasn't the easiest. The family was poor and often moved around so her father Samuel could find stable work. Unfortunately, stable work wasn't always available, and the family experienced financial woes throughout her childhood. From a young age, she displayed an admirable work ethic. Her father abandoned the family, and she had to find a way to make ends meet and look after everyone. She dropped out of school and took up a slew of odd jobs. Among those odd jobs was performing at various honky-tonks during the weekends. While she might have done this to make some extra cash, it was clear she was passionate about music. It was also clear she had an exceptional talent. While she had to juggle singing with other odd jobs, including cleaning Greyhound buses, she continued to work on her craft. Before we tell you more about Patsy Cline's life and career, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Patsy Gets Discovered At age 15, Virginia sent a letter to the Grand Ole Opry. This is a popular country music organization that features the most prominent country stars. It's been around for almost a century, but at the time it was still in its early 20s. Nevertheless, the Grand Ole Opry was one of country music's most important institutions. She was given a chance to audition to become a regular performer at the Grand Ole Opry concerts. She traveled to Nashville with her family to perform. Sadly, she never received a response. She later became a member after her music career took off. But this didn't discourage Virginia. She continued to perform in local clubs around the South. In 1952, she became a member of country musician Bill Pierce's band and toured with him. It was also at this time she adopted the stage name Patsy, drawing from her middle name, Patterson. In 1953, she won $100 in a country music contest. She was given the opportunity to perform on the TV show Town and Country Time, created by Connie B. Gay, often thought of as a founding father of country music. She began performing on various TV shows and her popularity was increasing by the day. She finally began recording music and releasing records in the late 50s. Patsy's Life and Career Patsy Cline began recording music in the mid-1950s. However, her first singles weren't met with much success. At age 24, she got a chance to perform on The Arthur Godfrey Show. She performed a song called Walkin' After Midnight. The performance became hugely popular, and she quickly recorded the song to release as a single. The song eventually reached the number two spot on the Billboard Country Chart. While it was a while until she achieved another big hit, this song made her a star. It also made her one of the first country singers to sell over one million copies of a record. Shortly after releasing this record, she divorced her first husband, Gerald. Gerald saw Patsy as a housewife and didn't feel comfortable with her becoming a major country star. She later married Charlie Dick, with whom she had two children, Julie and Randy. In the early 1960s, Patsy released hit after hit. Her popular songs included I Fall to Pieces, Crazy, Sweet Dreams, and She's Got You. Patsy Cline had become unstoppable. At a young age, she'd become one of America's most prominent country stars. At the time, she seemed immortal, and it seemed her career would span decades. Unfortunately, this wasn't meant to be. And strangely enough, it seemed as if Patsy knew she wouldn't live long. She had experienced two serious car accidents during her life. While she managed to survive those harrowing events, they often made her think about mortality. The Plane Crash on Tuesday, March 5, 1963, Patsy Cline boarded a plane. This aircraft ultimately crashed and brought about her death. But what's even more haunting are the chilling words Patsy Cline spoke shortly before the crash. She apparently told singer Ray Walker, Honey, I have had two bad ones. The third one either will be a charm or it'll kill me. It's likely the bad ones referred to her two car accidents. On March 3, 1963, Patsy Cline performed at a concert in Kansas City, Kansas. It was a benefit at the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall. The benefit was for the famous disc jockey Cactus Jack Call, who had died in a car crash a month earlier. 
Patsy performed with other popular country music stars, including George Jones, Billy Walker, Wilma Lee, and Hawkshaw Hawkins. No doubt she gave one of her best performances at this show. Her final performance was I'll Sail My Ship Alone. Following the concert, she intended to travel back to Nashville where she lived, but she was unable to catch a flight from Fairfax Airport due to poor weather conditions. She spent the night at the Townhouse Motor Hotel. She was offered a ride by Dottie West and her husband Bill. The drive back to Nashville would take just under a day of non-stop travel, but Patsy politely declined, opting to fly at a later date. In fact, the way she worded her refusal was rather strange. She rejected Dottie's offer by saying, Don't worry about me, Hoss. When it's my time to go, it's my time to go. Patsy boarded a plane destined for Nashville. The plane was a Piper PA-24 Comanche plane, and it was piloted by Randy Hughes. Sadly, she never made it home to Nashville. The plane crashed in a forest near Camden, Tennessee, about 90 miles away from Nashville. No one survived. Patsy was just 30 when she was killed on March 5, 1963. Many fans, friends, and family members came to pay their respects at her funeral. She was buried at the Shenandoah Memorial Park in Winchester, Virginia, the town in which she was born and spent much of her childhood. Patsy's Legacy Patsy Cline's life ended much too soon, but in only 30 years, she managed to rise from her humble beginnings in Virginia to become one of the biggest stars in country music. To this day, she's remembered as an icon of the genre. Many of her most popular songs were released after her death. There have also been posthumous albums providing remastered editions of her most popular songs. In 1967, Decca Records released Patsy Cline Greatest Hits. This album later won an award in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the longest album recorded by a female artist to hold a place on a music chart. In 1991, MCA, which had bought Decca Records, released a box set of her music. It was called the Patsy Cline Collection. It was listed by Rolling Stone in their 50 Greatest Albums of All Time. Even after her death, her songs have been the part of the soundtrack for many popular films. These have included Blood Simple, Natural Born Killers, Tommy Boy, A Texas Funeral, The Departed, and Welcome to Marwin. Her songs have been used in TV shows like Moonlighting, SNL, the Academy Awards, and more. Patsy Cline left us too soon, but her music will continue to live on. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Patsy's gotten her due as one of country music's best artists? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.